Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Truth Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Wow, what an announcement. I love it. Yeah, that's reference to our previous conversation about uh, how you should be a talk show host and I could be the announcer. Oh, wait, maybe I had that No, back. no, no, that was, the, yeah, it was the other <laughs> way around. <laughs> but you would be a good announcer, too. That would be very fun. Mm -hmm. That would be very, I'd love to scream at a studio audience. Right? That would be ideal. And get them all hyped up. Yeah. Get, I could, I'm a crowd man. I could do some crowd work for mm -hmm. sure. Oh, for I sure. love improvisational crowd work. You could oh. do it. Uh, we are talking about decluttering today, which is, oh, the sweet spot for us. Mm -hmm. My goodness. This starts a, uh, a three, I think we have a three week uh, series. This wraps up our season, 28. Mm -hmm. And we have a fourth bonus. This is not even a bonus. It's episode one of season 29 that is also going to be sort of decluttering. Well, yes, because uh, I wanted four. Yes. And we only had three slots. So we thought, right. you know what? <laughs> we'll just make the fourth one be the first show of season 29. Season 29, which is a great way to kick off a new season by the end of an old season. <laughs> Weird. It's what are we it, thinking? It makes uh, sense. It totally it makes totally sense does. to me. <laughs> it makes sense on our spreadsheet for sure. Right, um, right. And so we're very excited about talking about decluttering. We're talking about, uh, we, we're starting this week with Declutter 101. This is for if you just don't know how to get started. We're going to start there. Uh, next week, we're going to do organizing principles with ADHD. And the week after, uh, we're going to talk about, I'm going to be honest with you, what I really need is what it means to stay organized with ADHD. So I'm totally into it for the first two. But for the third one, you're talking to me, not at me. How about that? Oh, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm very excited for this series. I think it's important. It is, you know, in spite of all of the, the episodes we've done over the years on, on clutter, uh, it is still something that we are all collectively dealing with uh, in this clutter filled culture that we have. So we're talking about it uh, before we dig in. Head over to TakeControlADHD.com, get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list, and we'll send you a new episode each time a, each time one is released. Uh, it, you know, if you want to hang out with us, though, and this is, my goodness, so cool. The Discord server is really, really great. And I have to just call out the conversation between two of our members, uh, Dr. Dodge and Angela. Angela had asked a question about uh, anger. It was an incredibly astute, uh, introspective question. And Dodge gave what I thought was an incredibly astute and introspective response. And it just created something really special in that community. And it just highlights it's a gem of, uh, of, of what the community has grown to become. So if you want to check that out, head over to takecontroladhd.com slash discord. You can get into the free channels there. If you really want to get to see all of the secret channels and get to be a part of some of those conversations that are really transformative, uh, head over to patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast for a few bucks a month. You're supporting this show specifically. You're supporting the work that Nikki and I and Melissa and the rest of the team do to make this show a reality each week. Uh, going on, you know, as we wrap up season 29, going or season 28, going on to season 29. Um, that's what Patreon fuels and funds. And so uh, head over there, patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to learn more. Thank you for your support. Nikki, declutter me. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's do it. Welcome. Well, first of all, I want to say the ad that I couldn't do in front of people, mm -hmm. uh, that people that are listening to this will hear it when, be, actually, probably before we even start talking about this yes. right now, they're going to yeah. hear this yeah. ad that They'll I wasn't able to do. Yeah, yeah. So, so I was not able to do that in front of a live audience, but uh, I do want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> because it is uh, the declutter challenge. And um, my intention has been to do this twice a year. 
and uh-huh. uh, it's it's in January, and then it is going to be in June. But my daughter is graduating high school this June, and yeah. so that has been um, filling my time. So we're going to do it in July instead. And the focus of this challenge has always been to just clear the clutter. Uh, it is not to uh, organize or think too much about maintenance or anything like that. It's just to get the things out of your house or your home or space, where, wherever you're decluttering. Storage unit could be anything. Um, but to get the things that, that you don't love, that you don't need, that are just, you know, cluttering your space, your mind, and uh, and letting those things go. And we gamify the process, which is great because who doesn't love games? It just makes it more fun. Savages. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we're doing it as a community and it's just a really great thing. So I really encourage everybody to uh, get on board with us and declutter in July because it's a lot of fun. Um but again, the purpose is to let things go because we accumulate things. We just do. And uh, no matter, you know, any of the were or any of the organizing rules that you've heard, like one in, one out, like that's in theory, that's great. You you buy something and then you let something go. But nobody does that. Like who does that? Uh, so we accumulate these things. So where I, I want to say I do that yeah. with clothes. I do that with clothes. Oh, with clothes. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a one yeah. in, one out clothes guy. But oh, it's you are. hard to do with anything else. Yeah, for sure. How do you stick to that? Because I have never done that. I have never actually thought one in, one out. So tell me why. How do you do that? Because I have a fixed amount of space. So you know you can't like get the skinny hangers and like push them together no. and make more space? Nope. <laughs> no. I have a, I have a fixed number of hangers. If I want to get a new shirt for a new hanger, something has to be donated. That's actually pretty smart because I just go and buy more hangers. Yeah. You're yeah. you're saying, no, I, this is... I started this when we were still an organizing podcast and talked about one in, one out and the value of... Remember when we, we had this thing where you, you talk about putting turning all your hangers around. Right. I remember that. Backward, and as soon as you wear something off one of the hangers, you turn the hanger back around. Right. And at the end of some period, the hangers that are still facing mm-hmm. the other way, ditch the stuff. And, and so yeah. that kind of started me on the one in, one out. Uh, and then I, I got on Stitch Fix for a little while. And uh-huh. once they're sending you new clothes on some regular basis, you got to yeah. get rid of old stuff. And so that's I don't do Stitch Fix anymore. But but that was kind of when I got on that thing. When somebody gives me new clothes for Christmas, yeah. if I like them, something else has to go. Well, OK, well, you proved me wrong. I, I stand as your servant. <laughs> I love it. I think that's great. And I love the number of hangers. Like, that's a really good idea. All right. So we're off to a great start. Uh- can I tell you a thing? <laughs> I should not say this. I'm going to say this out loud. There are people in here who know my wife. And uh, this is going to, this is a thing that might embarrass my wife, but I'm, I have to say it anyway, because it's important. It's important for people to know what can happen. My wife does not share the number of hangers thing yeah. that I do. And so one day we're in bed reading and we hear this crack in her closet and her curtain rod broke out of the wall oh and no fell under the distressing weight of all of the clothes jammed on that curtain rod okay that, so that it's is a time for her to declutter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's reinforcing behavior for me. Like, she's a great warning to others. <laughs> like, yeah. why do I don't want that to happen? I didn't like fixing that. Like, that's this yeah. was not fun. No. Yeah. This was All not right. fun. All right. That, that's interesting. That's very interesting. So, yeah. The clothing thing, it may work. It may work. Yeah. All right. And, good. and let me say, it hasn't worked with anything else in my life. So, you know. But that's uh, that's a good thing for it to yeah. to work on because that yeah. is one of the areas that we <laughs> definitely accumulate a lot of stuff. Yeah. All right. So in organizing your space, we have an online course that's all about organizing your space. And in the month of July, it's going to be 30 <laughs> percent off. So I want everybody to know that because we oh. are celebrating organizing in all of July, yeah, not just the declutter sure. challenge, but everywhere. And there are four steps to organizing any space. And these are the four steps that uh, when we have talked about organizing in the past, 
this is how we break it down. We have step one, which is planning. Step two, which is the sorting and decluttering. Step three is the organizing, putting things back. And then the fourth is maintaining. <clears throat> so this uh, step one is really about figuring out which spaces you want to tackle, right? So where do you want to start? And that's a hard a hard decision sometimes to make because everything feels important everything feels cluttered everything feels like it's a you know a burden in some way so what we want to do is when we're starting this process is just choose one space first don't worry about every space because that's looking at the whole forest and not just one tree so we want to look at one tree right uh, and to decide that space, we can think about like, what would be the biggest impact on you, other people you live with, you know, it could be a space that you use daily, um, that if you made it, uh, you know, or cleaned it up a little bit, would it make it easier, you know, for you to live in that space? But we also don't want to necessarily tackle the hardest space you have either. So there's got to be like a, a happy medium here um, so that you get used to kind of this process and, and get sort of a rhythm in how you're doing this. You don't want, you know, the most difficult one. Like for me, I wouldn't just start in my garage. I would probably start with the closet or, you know, a drawer or something like that. So then the step two is the decluttering. That's the sorting. And what we're doing here is we are taking an inventory of what you have, what, what you own, and you are making decisions on what is going to stay and what is going to go. And this decision making is uh, mentally uh, exhausting. So even with the, the easy decisions, it's still really it takes a toll on you mentally because you have to look at everything and, and consciously make a decision if this is important or not. So one of my tips right off the bat is, you know, when you are doing these sorting sessions, do it at a time where you have your, your, your mind is the clearest it is. So maybe right after you took your medicine or right after you exercised, right? You want a clear mind. You want to have some high energy, you know, so we want to choose your work time intentionally because it will be sometimes physically and mentally e exhausting, you know, depending if you're moving a lot of stuff around. Um, but when you are starting in a space, we want to make those easy decisions first. So that's kind of the second tip is easy decisions. So we're grabbing a box for donations, trash bag for trash, a container of your choice for recycle. And my uh, recommendation is to always start at one corner of the space and work yourself around. So if you're doing your office, start in one little corner and just make easy decisions, right? So what, what are the easy decisions? It could be anything that's trash, broken items that you have no intentions to fix, like they've been broken for years. Uh, duplicates if they're not necessary. Now, sometimes duplicates are necessary. And I had this whole conversation on our last challenge around this. So sometimes duplicates are good. They're not always bad. Um, but you have to just decide what your boundaries are around them. And then anything you don't want or love or need that you can make that decision within seconds. You don't have to think about it. Um, so question. Yeah, of course. So all of this. Because I could keep talking all day. So no, yeah, I know. We're just going to we're going to yeah. write it all in, <laughs> onto the end of the of the day. So, uh, but the the question is this, and I know we run into this when you start this process is, you run into something that doesn't that you do want to keep that you know is important. That's an easy decision, but it doesn't belong in that space that you're currently clutter decluttering. Oh, good, good point. Okay, so. In that situation, I would have a box and I would label it relocate. Okay. Or it could even be a corner, right? Where you just throw yeah. things, <laughs> toss things. Right. And this doesn't belong here, but then put a little sign in the corner that says relocate just so that you don't forget. Um, yeah. And what the intention for that is, is we don't want to stop your momentum because you have ADHD, if you were to take that item and then go put it in the room that you 
think it belongs in. There's a lot of time that is in between the, those two action steps. And there's a lot of stuff around you that's around, you know, in between those two action steps that could distract you or get you off of course. Oh yeah, I mean that's the, that's my thing. If I if I have a if I find a hammer in my office closet, I'll take the hammer to the garage where it belongs and start decluttering the garage. Absolutely, and th that's what I think is so important. That relocate bucket, having something to introduce friction that right. prevents you from leaving the space where you currently are or, or are decluttering is really important. Don't leave the area of operation until Absolutely. you're ready to stop doing the work for a little while. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's why also we want to make the easy decisions, because as soon as you don't know, you just keep going. Keep it. Yeah. Right. You just keep right. going because we want that momentum, because as hard as you you know, or as difficult as it may seem like, oh, I don't think I have any easy decisions. You probably really do, though. I mean, and that's yeah. the thing is that those easy decisions, once you get those things out of the room, you know, it makes a difference. And one one thing I want to say, too, is that it doesn't have to necessarily be the corner of a room. It could be like just the floor. I, I was talking to someone recently and we were talking about um, organizing her office and her craft room. And, and we were talking about where to start. And she's like, well, I can't even walk in it. And I'm like, okay, well, let's just start with the floor. So yeah. there are other You're things right that, around the door. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you can get a path. Yeah. So it's not necessarily, you know, one way or the other. But what we want to avoid, and this is important too, is what we call churning. And this is an organizing term, like churning butter, but it's churning things. So basically what you're doing is you're just moving things around, but you're not making any decisions. It's kind of like that procrastivity that we were talking about with Dr. Ramsey is that it feels like you're productive because you're you're in your stuff and you're moving stuff around, but you're not making any decisions. And maybe the, the piles are tidier, but you're not seeing any kind of progress because you're not really letting anything go. So we want to be somewhat you know, strategic about where we start so that you can see your progress. And that's the biggest thing is we want to, you want you to, we want you to walk away feeling like, wow, look, look at what I did today and, uh, and feel good about that. Yeah. So we, this is, how do you know you're, you're finished with your first sort? Well, so if easy decisions start to feel hard, if you start to feel like, I, this, nothing's coming to me that's easy. And then we need to take a break and we need to come back to it later and keep doing it. So if you don't go through the whole space and you're starting to feel that way, take a break, come back to it later. Now, when you've gone through the whole space, you know, once, then it's time to do a second sort, right? Because right now all we've done is the easy decisions. And now we have to do a second sort and this is where it gets more complicated. This feels like this feels I'm, I just want to throw up a red flag between the first and the second sorts, because it feels like this is an ADHD thing where I can start my first sort and I can have all the best intentions to make the easy decisions first. But invariably, I'm going to pick something up that's a slightly harder decision. And my brain is going to fixate on the second sort behavior instead yeah. of the first sort behavior. You know what I mean? Well, not only that, but it's also going to jump if you have something that is something you're going to keep. It also jumps to where am I going to put what it? What am I going to do with it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Where does it right. go? So there's a lot of different ways that this can, you know, go sideways. And so I would say for your first point, the, the first and second sort you just have to keep reminding yourself that, nope, I, this isn't an easy decision. I'm going to do this again and keep going. So, mm -hmm. you know, you may need a little reminder somewhere that you know, a, a post-it note somewhere that says first sort, just to kind of yeah. remind you of what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, and then when it comes to the organizing piece, I would say again, first sort, like sort, like just keep those reminders. That's all you're doing is making decisions on what's staying and going, but not where they're living. So that's, right. that's the third step. It's a different step and that gets people stuck. So it's really important to, to remember that as well. Um, so you need the reminders just to remind yourself like what your intention is for this session. Yeah. Uh, right. And we're going to talk about like, 
where things go in our next podcast because that's the third step and then the fourth step is maintaining which will be the th yeah. the third in the series so okay. um yeah so that second sort gets a little trickier this is where you might want to have someone do this with you um if you have a good friend or a family member like you guys you know if you uh know that both of you have areas that you want to work on work together it's just as easier if you have somebody to to work with than doing it by yourself uh adhders are verbal processors no doubt about it and so when they are picking up an item and they're looking at this coffee cup and they're like, do I keep this? Well, I know I would keep it because I love this coffee cup and I use it every okay. morning. But what about the other coffee cup that I don't use? Um, that's going to be a harder decision to make. And so me talking to Pete about it, it's going to come up with things that you are thinking and you're going to say verbally. And then you're going to, it's just sometimes easier to make the decision because you're like, oh, right. Like, I use it for pens, so it's still useful. <laughs> it's useful. Right? I have pens in it. So I have a pen. Look at all your pens that you show. I have a pen. Yeah, I have a lot of pens. Wow. Uh, so, but just talking it through. But then there's also these like coffee cups that I have in the cupboard that we haven't used for years. And so I could say, well, I don't use those. I just use them in case companies here. But, you know we have other ones they can use too. So, mm -hmm. you know, just being able to talk it through can make a big difference. Um, well, and that's, a, this is an interesting thing that I run into, which is that I find myself emotionally attached to objects while I'm talking about them. But once I declutter them and get them, get rid of them, I don't think about them anymore. Oh, and, right. And out of sight, I've out gone, of mind. Yeah. I've gone through the steps of saying, oh, here's a, let's just say mugs again, because we we're apparently this is mug casting uh, today. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I, you know, here's a mug that I got when I was, uh, it's, it's like, I, I still, I, it took a long time for me to get rid of my uh, University of Colorado residence life uh, mug that I got when I was a hall director. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> at, at CU. And I had that for years because it was attached to a moment in time, but I never drank out of it. It was too small. And it was, I, you know, it, it just sat in the back of our cabinet. It was taking up all kinds of space, but I loved the mug. I was able to get rid of the mug and haven't thought about the mug until right now as an example of what a great thing it was to get rid of this mug. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. the mug, I, I didn't need the mug and I right. don't think about that. I don't miss the mug and it's fine. I got rid of the mug. So yeah. I think the act of second guessing my hyper focus on objects is really important because my first gut reaction often can't be trusted. Right, right. And so you do have to kind of work through it, right? And that's the thing is that we want, and I have a set of questions that I feel are are really good questions because it really gets to the point of usability of mm -hmm. some of these things right um and i'll go over those in a second but there is a book and we'll put it in the show notes once i remember who wrote it um but there was a book that i studied when i was a professional organizer and she had three um categories of where your items live and or what how you how you are emotionally attached to them, I guess. One is like the family and friends. Like this is a family member, right? This person, this this item is a is a friend. You want them in your home. Mm -hmm. um, this item is an acquaintance. You know, you, you might say hi to them on the street, but you don't necessarily invite them over for a sleepover, right? So, and mm -hmm. then you have the third, which is a stranger. And you don't want this person in your home. And so it's a way to sort of attach your items to the the feelings that they sort of come alive with, right? Because we are so emotionally attached to some things. And so it's just another way of saying, okay, is this is this a friend and a family member or is this an acquaintance or is this a stranger? So it's just another way of thinking. Um, yeah. the, the other one that I really like is, does it bring you joy? And that's the, um, Marie Kondo. Right. Um, <clears throat> and I am not a huge advocate for all of her things for ADHD. Um, but uh, I do love that question. Does it bring you joy? I think yeah. is really important uh, to think about, you know, and, and why, like how, why, you know, why are you going to keep it? Um, 
And then there's some other questions too, like, you know, some basic ones, like, do you use the item regularly? And, but it's not just yes or no. When was the last time that you used it? Mm -hmm. And how often do you use it? And what has stopped you from using it? And what are your plans for using it in the future? Like, I want to yeah. know when, like if I was, if I was working alongside you and you were questioning something, I'd be like, okay, well, you haven't used it in the last year. When was the last time? Well, I don't even remember. All right. Well, what stopped you from using it? I never really needed it. Okay. When, when are you going to use it again? Well, I don't know. Then you know what? Yeah. That's probably something we can go, go ahead and let Get go rid of. of it. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, is the item taking valuable space? And, you know, when you and I were doing the organizing podcast, I remember us talking about this, like, is the item worth keeping the space that it would, that it's taking from something else that you really do value? Mm -hmm. And that's an important thing to think about. Like, is it worth its space? And if it's not, then go ahead and and let it go. Um, can it be replaced or can you borrow it if you need it in the future um, right. are good questions um, to ask. And I would also say, you know, what what happens if you if you what would happen if you didn't keep it? And this is to your point, Pete, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. We forget that we even had we it forget. in the first place. Right. right. Now, that is that is where, where I run into trouble with that is when I forget that I have it and I go borrow it. But that also <laughs> proves my point, right? Right. Like it proves that I didn't need the thing in the first place because it's easily replaceable on short notice, right? Right, right. Like if I were to get rid of it and I don't use it very often, when I do need it, I could find one or rent one or borrow one and it'd be easy enough to get. Yeah. Well, and, and the items that have, that still have price tags on them, um, mm -hmm. the items that we bought on sell impulsive purchases that have never been used. It's hard to get rid of those sometimes because of the guilt of the wasted money. You know, I already paid money for this and I, I'm not using it. So maybe I will someday. Um, and so those are hard to make too. And, and in that situation, I would say, well, when is that someday? Like really ask, mm -hmm. like, when would it be? And could someone else benefit from it more than you at this point? And would you be okay letting it go so that someone else could actually use it? Um, yeah. And are, and are you keeping the item just purely out of guilt or obligation? Yeah. Um, because that's not always a good thing either. I mean, you know, if we kept every single gift that we've ever gotten or received it, you know, you're filled with a bunch of stuff that you don't necessarily use. So yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so those questions are important to just kind of keep digging in deeper and, um, you know, figuring out what is important, but after that first and second sort, you know, take a step back and acknowledge the great work that you just did. Uh, because this is no small accomplishment. This is huge and it's hard and, uh, it, it's something you will notice a difference and it's something to be proud of. So, yeah. um, that's something I definitely want people to to walk away with and and stop when it's good enough. Um, I think that that's another thing is like, how do you know when the sorting step is done and you go into organizing and, you know, for every space, it's different. But I, I think at some point you just have to be that this is good enough. This is good enough. I can find it what I need, you know, for the most part. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, because perfection can get in the way here, right? Because if you feel like you're not finished until it's perfect, you're never going to be finished. So mm -hmm. it's a matter of like, you know, can you walk in the room now? Okay, great. Uh -huh. Do you have a general idea of where your photographs are? Great. All right. Do you have a general idea of where your uh, gardening tools are? Okay. They may not be like, you know, beautifully displayed, but at least you kind of know where they are. Um, mm -hmm. And they're not being cluttered by too many of them. You know, you have, you can see what you, you have and what you need. So really getting to that point where you feel like you can uh, function in the space better 
And then you move on to step three, and that's, you know, really organizing the the space and putting items back in their homes and creating homes for the things that don't have homes yet, because that's right. a lot of what our clutter is, right? If you look at clutter, a lot of times it's just things that don't have a home yet. Well, and that implies sort of the next step of of first sorting the rest of your spaces, because so many of these things become cascading exercises, oh, yes. right? We we talked about that that uh, the box that says relocate. How do you think about moving to the next space? Uh, like, at, at what point do you free yourself from moving on from the office closet to? you know, the hall closet or the bedroom or the living room, right? Because at some point they all connect. Yeah, that's such a great question. And I think it's a, it's around prioritizing. And again, this is where the planning, that step one, I think is important because we're not just running into a space and starting to organize it. We're really thinking through how this works. And the the best example I can give you is what I'm doing currently in my own home right now. Is it? Because of graduation, we are going to have people staying at our house and we're going to have a, a party. And I have to think about, OK, what areas are going to be the most impactful and which areas are people not going to see? So my attic, I'm not going to worry about it. Does it need to be done? Absolutely. But does it need I'm to be done in this season? No. So I'm not going to worry about the attic. Now, if I'm in the garage my good enough in the garage people are gonna think this is funny uh coming from me because they probably expect this like really beautiful garage but my <laughs> my goal is that you can actually walk on the steps from the garage door into the garage or you know the, the not the garage door but the door to the house to the garage we have these steps and i want the steps to be clear <laughs> Okay. It seems like a low bar. Yeah. Low bar. I want the steps to be clear. And then I want it to be very easy to get into the car. (laughs) So, well, here's an interesting low bar that you have all, you implicitly already got to the top of, which is you want your car in the garage. Yeah. One car. That's all that we can fit in it. But yeah, one. Uh-huh. See, that's a thing because that's another choice to make. Maybe you're uh, someone who's like, you know, I'm going to use the garage to deal with my clutter and organizing problem and park the cars outside. That's fine. And right. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I for, for me personally, that becomes a, a potential sore spot later. <laughs> Your garage could end up being a disaster. Uh, and so, you know, for, yeah. for me, putting the cars in the garage keeps some order in the garage, right? It keeps me on top of decluttering because I don't use the garage to fill it up with stuff. Yeah, you don't have the middle part of it yeah. filled up. Right. Yeah. Well, and this is also an example of what's good enough. I'm not organizing yeah. the whole thing. I just no. want to make sure that it's a clear path so that when my in-laws are getting into our car, it, they aren't tripping over a dog crate, right? So, yeah. uh, you know, so that's that's kind of how I'm looking at it. And then, you know, they're going to be staying in, in the guest room. So I need to make sure that the the guest room is prepared and ready to go. And, you know, that guest room ends up being kind of a dumping ground when it's not, when there's not a guest in there. So there's some cleanup that has to be done. So it's a matter of like that getting into the next step is really thinking about what is the most impact, right? So if I started with the guest bedroom, then the bathroom makes sense to go to next. I don't necessarily just go to where the relocate box is Is because what I found in the guest room may go, there are things that probably could go in the garage or at it. Relocate is not space specific. No, no. So it's really kind of going by what, what would be the biggest impact and how much time you have, like how much, like I have a hard deadline, right? And Mm -hmm. when we have deadlines like that, that motivates us. But when we don't have deadlines and we just want to clear it because it's annoying us, it's harder to do because there isn't yeah. any kind of clear deadline. So it's also just kind of deciding like what what kind of energy do you have to put into this? How important is it? Um, and And really defining what the good enough is so that you don't have yeah. to spend a bunch of time on it. Um, you know, and get your, get your people involved. If you're living with other people, family, um, partners, whatever, get them involved in it too, because it just goes faster. You know, if it's not just you by yourself. 
Um, yeah. And, and that's, you know, and also not an easy thing to do because like I have more of a lower threshold of what to keep. And my husband has definitely more of what he wants to keep. And so, you know, sometimes there is some back and forth, but that's being married. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, oh, okay, last question, and then I promise I'll move on. Because we yeah. may want to save this question to um, to the end of the last episode, right? But when you're looking at... No, I'm going to keep it for the end of the last episode. This is a teaser. It's about maintenance. Turns out my question's about maintenance. Didn't even okay. know it. It snuck up on me. So keep listening to these episodes, because eventually we're going to get to my great question. I oh, love it. I can't wait. All right. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out and listening to this part one of our uh, organizing series for uh, the year of our Lord 2024. <laughs> what a weird, weird way to say that on my part. Uh, we appreciate you hanging out with us. We appreciate your time and your attention. Make sure to head over to Discord. People are talking about organizing and decluttering, and it's going to be a great place over the next month to talk about how you want to get your spaces in order and uh, don't forget the declutter challenge for July is coming. We're very excited about that too. So that's it. Uh, on behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll see you right back here next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm-hmm.